Welcome to the FabLite tutorial. I'm your FabLite expert, John, and whether you're just checking out our software, just got your own brand new FabLite, or you're already experienced with FabCreator and want to see if there are any new tricks, this series is for you. In this video, we're going to show you how to create and process files for cutting tubes using our SolidWorks plugin. If you haven't installed your plugin or FabCreator, head over to the tutorials to install those before you begin. We also won't cover in detail how to bring these files into FabCreator in this video, but you can always watch the previous tutorial to see how we process two projects in detail. Let's jump right in. If you want to see more of this kind of content from us, give it a thumbs up to let us know it's useful, and subscribe to our channel as we release more tutorial videos. Have an idea for a video or want to see how something is done on FabCreator or on a FabLite? Let us know in the comments. Let's jump right in. For the plugin to work, you must use weldments to create your tubes. If you've never used weldments to create tubes, don't worry. I'll show you an example of just how easy it is to make them. First, click on your weldments tab and then click the weldment button. Next, we can create a 2D or 3D sketch of the length of the tube we'd like to cut. We're going to keep things simple and create two tubes that intersect with a length of 6 inches. For folks who are new to SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD program, it's always good practice to dimension parts as you go for easy modification later on. Then, we can exit the sketch and go back to our Weldments tab and click the Structural Member button. This will bring up a new tool dialog on the left-hand side of your screen. It's asking us to select the sketch segment we want to turn into a structural member, so let's click on the sketch we created. You should now see a preview of the tube we're about to create. Under the standard selection, we can click the drop-down and see the different profiles that are available. You should see three selections for the FabLite weldments we already imported. FabLite rectangle, round, and square. Select the one you'd like to create. For this tutorial, we'll go with a round tube. Then, we're going to select the type or the dimension. We have some standard dimensions that fit our FabLite machines available here. You can select one of these. We'll do one inch. Next, we're going to select the size or the wall thickness here, and we're going to select a wall of 0.125 inches. If you can't find the profile you need in our database, it's possible to create your own profiles. Read our plugin manual to learn more, but there are plenty of tutorials online to show you how to create and add them to your library. The rest of the settings can remain the same, so we can click the green check. Now we've got our tube. We'll repeat those steps for the other tube as well. Let's create a couple of features in this tube for the plugin to process. We're going to make a couple of quick sketches and cuts that show how I want the final part to look. And since we have the rotary that can spin the tube around, we can even put some features on the other side of this tube, like so. If you're working with multiple tubes in the same file, you may want to rename the tubes for easy organization later on. Go up to the cut list in the left-hand window and expand it. You'll see a part folder for each tube created. Expanding those further, you'll see a part in each folder that you can rename by right-clicking on the part and selecting rename tree item. It's important to save your file at this stage if you haven't already. The plugin will not let you go past a certain stage if the file is not saved. It's also important to note that wherever you decide to save your part file is the same location your plugin process files will end up, so expect to return to the same folder later. Now we have our tube with plenty of features to be processed in the plugin. Let's click on the 3D Fab Plugin tab and click Process Tubes. A new dialog will appear and a section to select the bodies you'd like to compensate. Select the tubes and then select the join type. Structural joints compensate the tubes to the inner diameter. This is great for making sure your cut tube meets the other 
and maintains the interior profile. The other option is pipe joints, where you want to maintain the exterior aesthetics of the pipes being connected. If you download our plugin manual, you'll see a full walkthrough of how this compensation would be done manually to better understand the benefits of our plugin. We also have another option in our plugin, Normalize Internal Features 2, and it's used to control how all cuts that are not internal to the tube are compensated. This feature is mainly used on round tubes. As you can see here, the main difference between these options is how the profile of the hole is prioritized, whether that's to the inner edge, the outer edge, or both. A deep dive into the differences between these options is available in our plugin. In general, normalizing features to the outer diameter will export a feature that would be the same as drilling a hole into the tube. Also, when processing your tube files in FabGrader, you have the option to cut holes as a 2D cut to give you the same drill to hole feature. You can also change the slit location of your tube export. The way the plugin works is it makes a cut in the tube or a slit and unwraps it into a flat sheet and draws the features as you define them here. In some cases, the features may get cut by the location of the slit, so this setting can be used to redefine the location, typically by 90 degrees. Issues can occasionally occur if there is a problem with the slit location. If the plugin does not process your file correctly, try changing the slit location first to see if the part is able to be replaced. Once you've decided on all your settings, you can click the green check mark. The tube will begin processing. Depending on the number of features you have in your tube, this step can take some time. After the plugin is done processing, your original file will be kept open, but a new part in a new assembly file will appear. This is your process part, and here you can check the features to see if they were processed the way you intended. Here, we can see the tube was correctly processed to compensate for the internal diameter and cuts the excess material away to ensure a perfect fit. If we rotate our part, we can also see the slit location to check if it interferes with any of our other features. Let's go back to the folder where we saved our original part. You'll now see a new subfolder that contains a compensated assembly for all your tubes, a SOLIDWORKS part for each of the compensated tubes, and a DXF for each of the tubes that contains your flat drawings. You'll take each of these DXF files into FabCreator to get your files ready for tube cutting. Once you're back in FabCreator, processing these parts is the same as processing other tube drawings. Check our tube processing video to learn more. To recap, you must use weldments to create your tubes. Use our weldment library for standard tubes, but you can also create your own profiles. Structural and pipe joint types have specific use cases for tube joints. Normalize features to change the profile of cut holes in round tubes, and your exported files are in the same locations as your original part file. Use our weldment library for standard tube profiles, and then add your own profiles as needed. Remember, cut right, cut with FabLite.